This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. When Christians proclaim, if you sin, God won't accept you, you've been imputing people's sin under them. If you go tell people, if you sin, God won't accept you, you have been holding people's sins against them. You're also demeaning and decreasing the value of Jesus' sacrifice. When you do that, when you do that, you're decreasing the value of everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus sacrificed for us. In reality, you're saying your sin is bigger and more important than what Jesus did on the cross. I'm going to make this statement, and I want you to get a hold of it. 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Jesus' righteousness made us right with God. Jesus' righteousness made us right with God. Now, how do you do that? How do you say that? Well, look at this scripture. For he hath made him, he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. He has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, now notice here, he made Jesus sin who had never sinned so that we could be made righteous and we've never been right. Wow. We didn't become righteous. We were made righteous because of Jesus. You see, here, here's what happened. Jesus is righteous. He came in. And, and, and it was a compensation for our sins. And so heaven said, if you believe in Jesus, you can get in him and I'll see you as righteous as I see Jesus. He says, I'm not calling you righteous because you're right. I'm calling you righteous because you believe in Jesus. And I see you through Jesus. And I see you righteous through Jesus. And I see you holy through Jesus. It ain't got nothing to do with what you did. It's got something to do with what he did. And so he said, uh, I'm going to have Jesus to take all of your sins, and he's going to look like sin on the cross, uh, but, he, but he'd never sinned before, just so you can look like you're righteous and you ain't never been right before. See, you take Jesus out of that equation, none of that can happen. In order to be reconciled to God, we had to be as good as God. That ain't never going to happen because of the fall in the garden. How in the world, take Jesus out, and, and the requirements are, in order to be reconciled to God, we got to be as good as God. How's that going to happen when, when we got sin all in our lives and on our lives? The only way that can happen is for the righteousness of God to be imputed unto us. The righteousness of God to be imputed unto us. The word impute means to charge against. And so, the only way we can be righteous is we believe God and they just say, you're righteous. Let me show you this scripture. He did that to Abraham, Romans 4, 20 and 25. See, I'm not righteous because I do right. I'm righteous because I believe in Jesus. And he said, I'm righteous because I believe in him. I've been made righteous. See, the church continues to think they're righteous because of what they do. You're not righteous because of what you do. You're righteous because of what he did. Notice here. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 
Next verse. And being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him, Abraham, for righteousness. So righteousness was imputed to Abraham. He said to Abraham, you're righteous. And, and, and Abraham was righteous because God declared him righteous. All right? Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to Abraham to be righteous to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, righteousness will be imputed to us also. God has charged righteousness to us. The only way we could be righteous is if he declared us righteous. Oh, my God, it's kind of like a king who, who takes this guy who's not in the bloodline of a knight, and, and, the, and the king declares that guy a, a knight. And that's the only way, the only way he can be a knight is the king declared him a knight. Not because of what he did, not because of his bloodline or where he came from, but the king declared him a knight. So likewise, you and I are righteous because Jesus, we are been, we've been declared righteous. I'm righteous because God declared me as righteous. And, and, and I'm righteous because I believe in God and he says you're righteous. Abraham believed and the Bible says you're righteous. Please get that in your head. You're only righteous because God declared you righteous. You're the righteousness of God because he said so. You're not the righteousness of God because you go to church all the time. You're not the righteousness of God because you help the poor. You're not the righteousness of God because you, you do goody-goody things. Now, some of you hear, uh, hear this as, well, that means I can do. No, I am not. You just stick with me right away. You know, Isaiah 61 and 10, he says, he hath covered me with the robe of righteousness. The only reason I'm righteous is that he put a robe and covered me with the robe of righteousness. I'm righteous because he covered me with the robe of righteousness. And so notice what happened. Philippians chapter 2, go there, verses 5 and 6. So how does Jesus accomplish this? There, God is a just God, and so he cannot do anything. If the issue is in order to be reconciled to God, we must be as good as God, then how do you do that? How does... How does a man come before God and be as good as God? Well, remember, Jesus was born as a man, so he could be a representative for all mankind. And the Bible says in verse 5, let this mind be in you which was in Christ Jesus, verse 6, who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Oh, so Jesus now is, is, is the representation for all man. No man from Adam could have possibly fulfilled the requirement of being as good as God so reconciliation could take place. But Jesus was. Jesus now was the representation for man. Jesus was, was, was all man, but he was all God at the same time. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Jesus died as a man. He was born as a man. Praise God. And, and, and the Bible says that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. And so Jesus was the representation for mankind that could stand before God representing a man and reconciliation could uh, take place and peace could be on the earth because of Jesus. Again, take him out of the equation. Look at where it leaves us. So Jesus paid the debt for sin. God's wrath is appeased. Now, man may not be reconciled to God. In other words, reconciliation is available. Men who have not accepted it, they may not be reconciled to God, but God has been reconciled to man. His wrath is is over, and he's given us to the ministry of reconciliation. God's not mad at you. His wrath is over. So the gospel speaks of how God placed all of the punishment for our sins upon Jesus. So as a judge, sin had punishment. In the Old Testament, there was punishment for sin. So in spite of our sins, our relative unworthiness and needs, Christ paid the price for us. Justice demanded our punishment. Justice demanded our punishment. There was sin. There had to be punishment for that sin. That was justice. So what happened was is that Jesus took the punishment for us. My goodness. Jesus took the punishment. Everybody watching me right now, every, we, we were all, 
We all have sinned, come short of the glory of God. Justice demanded a punishment. So that we wouldn't receive the punishment, Jesus was punished in our place. Jesus took the punishment. Now God's wrath has been forever satisfied. He's not angry with people. That might be the eighth time I said that. He's not angry with people. When the tornado hits and destroys things, that's not God's ang anger at people. When the fires in California break out, that's not God's anger with people. And people keep saying that's an act of God. No, he is not angry with people anymore. Jesus paid the price, and all we must do is receive that payment. Jesus paid the price. All we have to do is receive that payment. I received that payment. How? I received that my sins have been dealt with. I received that God is no longer mad at me. I received that I have been made righteous. I am righteous. I am forgiven. Praise God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that's good news. Think about it. You sinned. You sinned, and justice says you need to be punished for your sin. But you know what God says? Jesus paid the price so I can have mercy and so I can be a father and so I can teach you. That's the gospel. That's the gospel. People are still thinking that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the gospel. Part of it is in those things, but the gospel is that good news that God is not mad at us and Jesus has taken care of our sins and all of our sins have been forgiving, past, present, and future sins. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 19. He said, to wit that God was in Christ. What was he doing in Christ? Reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. Look at there. The, the word impute, charge against. So God says that he was in Christ reconciling the world. How could he reconcile the world? He said, I'm not going to hold your sins against you. I'm not going to hold your trespasses against you. What does that mean? He says, when it comes to healing you, I'm not going to not heal you because I hold your sins against you. When it comes for blessing you, I'm not going to not bless you because I hold your sins against you. He says, the only way this is going to work is I'm going to have to uh, not hold your trespasses against you. And so he says, uh, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto them the word of reconciliation. So it's almost like He's saying, I don't hold your sins against you. You don't hold, your, you don't hold sin against uh, other people. But that's not so in the church. We're so quick to get away from people who have missed the mark. And, and we forget that you missed the mark, but God says, I'm not going to hold your sins against you. And we love the whole sins of other people against them. And so he says, I won't, won't hold your sins against you. I want you to enter into this ministry of reconciliation. Don't allow your love not to be shown because you're holding somebody's sin against them. Don't, don't, don't allow your love not to, be, not to be demonstrated because you're holding their sins against them. Oh, you don't want to have anything to do with them because they're in the wrong lifestyle. Oh, you don't want to have anything to do with them because, you know, they, 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 they've taken drugs. Oh, you don't want to have anything to do with them because they're divorced. And you don't want to have anything to do with them. Look at us. We're not, in, we're not operating in the ministry of reconciliation. That's not what that is. God said that I am not imputing their sins against them. And we are so sin conscious, it's just hard for some people to, to, to believe that. We, we somehow think that if we don't preach sin all the time and, and, and if we don't hold sin against people, then we're not preaching the gospel. You are so wrong. That's not the ministry of reconciliation that we've been called to. We've been called to walk in love um, with, with, with sinners. That's what you see Jesus doing. Jesus ate with, with sinners. He, he, he talked with publicans, uh, uh, prostitutes were around. He, he didn't hold their sin against them. And, and he continued to show his goodness. There was a woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, pulled out sheets and all. Jesus didn't hold his goodness from her because of her sin. Get this in your head. He didn't do that. Now, listen to me very carefully here. In... Uh, over well, that 2 Corinthians 5, 19, notice God was in Christ not imputing. That means to hold against. He was not imputing. Sin isn't the issue. 
You, your sin isn't a problem with God. Sin isn't the issue. Your sin isn't a problem with God. Now, I know some of you, well, I'm going to go on sins if it's not a problem with God. See, if you really knew God, you wouldn't even say something or think something dumb like that. I'm trying to show you that you have focused too much. We have focused too much in the church on sin. Sin isn't an issue. Your sin isn't a problem with God. See, you need to, you need to compare and contrast these two things. Number one, making light of sin versus making light of Jesus. Making light of sin versus making light of Jesus. And I think what happens is, is you make light of Jesus when you make big of sin. And if you're going to make big of what Jesus has done, you got to make light of sin. And we can't figure that out. We're so, we're so focused and we, we're so busy enlarging sin issue that we find ourselves, you know, making little what Jesus did. What he did, what he did was amazing. It was, it was awesome. It was the greatest thing ever in the world. This is the only time a man can, can have this grace, even if he sins and God forgives him because he won't charge it against him. And, and, and you walking around spending more time making people sin conscious instead of spending time making big of what Jesus has done. We've tied... We've tied God's ability to our goodness. Listen to me. We've tied God's ability to our goodness. In other words, we say that based on how good I am is going to determine whether God can do something for me. We've tied his ability to our goodness. Uh, well, God's not going to heal me because I hadn't been good. See, you've tied his ability to your goodness. Well, God's not going to prosper me because I hadn't, I hadn't been acting like I should act. You tied his ability to your goodness. And God's ability is not tied to your goodness. His ability is not tied to your goodness. We've got to, we've got to recognize we've been reconciled to God. God's good to us because of Jesus. We're righteous because of Jesus. We're forgiven because of Jesus. And you still think, that what God can do in your life versus what he can't do in your life is tied to, to your goodness. So, man, if you hadn't been good enough, then, you know, God can't use you to pray for sick. If you hadn't been good enough, then you're limiting God because you keep saying, well, God can't do nothing for me because I'm not good enough. People don't go to hell, ladies and gentlemen, because of their sins. Oh, <gasps> that's right. All my life, every church I've ever gone through, you're going to go to hell because of your sins. People don't go to hell because of their sins. They go to hell because they rejected the payment for sin. They go to hell because they refuse to receive the Savior. You go to hell. The only way you can end up in hell is that you reject Jesus, you reject the payment, you reject the compensation. That's why you go to hell. I, I don't know, it blows people's mind, but that's why you go to hell. If anybody goes to hell for sin, then everybody's going to hell for sin. Yep, I said it. You don't go to hell for sin. Now, that's not an excuse to sin, but that's what people have used. They've used hell to put fear in people, and people were so sin conscious and so fear conscious and so death conscious that you don't understand as soon as you have faith in Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit's going to come in and start changing your heart and you're not going to want to sin because he's going to take that desire out of you. But we, we, we just had to, the only way we can get people to live right is to preach sin. Have you noticed you've been preaching sin all your life and people still sinning? Sin is not the issue. You got to get them focused on Jesus and focused on the Savior and receive him as your Lord and personal Savior. When Christians proclaim, if you sin, God won't accept you, you've been imputing people's sin under them. If you go tell people, if you sin, God won't accept you, you have been holding people's sins against them. You're also demeaning and decreasing the value of Jesus' sacrifice. When you do that, when you do that, you're decreasing the value of everything that Jesus did, everything that Jesus sacrificed for us. In reality, you're saying your sin is bigger 
and more important than what Jesus did on the cross. Do you think that? Do you think your sin is bigger and more important than what Jesus did on the cross? It's not. Your sin isn't bigger and more important than what Jesus did on the cross. God was in Jesus, not imputing man's sin unto them. God was not in Jesus imputing man's sin. He was not imputing man's sin unto them. Sin is not the issue. It is all a matter of what people are doing with Jesus. Stop making sin the issue and make Jesus the issue. If you make Jesus the issue, he has, is the one that's taking care of the sin, and he will change your heart from inside out. If someone doesn't receive Jesus as their Savior, they reject the only payment available for sin. If you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, you reject the only payment for sin. I'm sure you think, well, listen, uh, I just don't believe. Well, if you don't believe, you go to hell because you didn't accept Jesus as your, as your payment for sin. And then, then you're trying to say, well, I'll pay it myself. And then you work real hard trying to be good. And then you work real hard trying to do everything that you think will, implete, will please God. Now, honey, God's already pleased because of what Jesus did. Listen to me. This is the gospel I'm preaching to you, man. Look at this in uh, St. John 14, verse 6. St. John 14, verse 6, he says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Can you see what the devil's trying to do now? Trying to get Jesus out of your life, trying to get Jesus out of your attention because Jesus is the only way to the Father. The way to the Father is not by doing your thousands of good deeds. The way to the Father is not counting up at least 100 days at a time where you've been perfect or flawless. No, no, that's not the way to the Father. I mean, you do everything you can to be flawless and perfect. That's not the way to the Father. The way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. It's through you accepting Jesus as the payment, as this peace offering, as the Savior. That's your Savior. You can't go to the Father. You can't get to the Father through Buddha. You can't get through the Father through Mohammed. You can't get to the Father through through whatever. Jesus is the only way you get to the Father. And if you got a problem with Jesus because Satan has filled your thoughts like he did Peter and you're opening your mouth, Satan has filled your thoughts. Think of that. You're saying that because Satan has filled your thoughts. And I told you before, you don't have to debate with me. Keep your letters to yourself because you're going to die one day. And I'm going to die one day. And when that time comes, you will see that Jesus is the door. He's the only way in. He's the only way out. He is the door. So if they don't accept the payment for their sins, the Lord Jesus Christ, they'll be rejected and cast into hell. Not because of their sins, but because of rejecting Jesus. In hell, they'll be held accountable and somehow have to pay for these sins. But the truth is, all of the sins that you went to hell for have already been paid by Jesus. That's the real torment of going to hell. You go to hell for sin that was already paid for, but you didn't accept it. You didn't have to go to hell, so you think you're going to hell for your sins, but if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your payment and your Lord and your Savior, glory be to God. You see how tormenting that is? You said, man, all I had to do is believe that. All I had to do is receive that my sins were paid for and I wouldn't be in this crazy place. You're going to go to hell because you're so doggone smart that you, you believe all of this humanistic junk, these fables that people are preaching, and you decided, I'm not going to have anything to do with Jesus. I, I don't want to have anything to do with religion. I don't want to have anything to do with religious, religion, but I want, Jesus is my everything. Jesus is my everything. Wow, man, wake up. Wake up. Get a hold of this now. Therefore, sin isn't really the issue. The issue is what are you going to do with Jesus? Now, at this point, you have to look at everything and receive God's love. The Lord wants you to stop focusing on sin and start focusing on his love. Jesus did everything he did because he first loved us. 
When you think of God, do you think of someone sitting high on a throne, looking down and judging you? Do you feel like God is angry with you? Well, in Creflo Dollar's liberating series, Jesus, the Peacemaker, receive a revelation on how God's gift of Jesus Christ produced peace between God and man. For a love gift of just $25 or more, you can receive this series where he shows how Jesus paid the price for us to be at peace with God. Start seeing God loving you with an unconditional love. Stop trying to find reasons why it's not enough and that God doesn't want to help you and bless you and, and prosper you. Understanding righteousness will cause us to reign or to rule in life. When sickness comes, you rule over it. When lack comes, you rule over it. When depression comes, you rule over it. When you understand righteousness, you will rule in life. Call the number on your screen or visit creflodollarministries.org to order today. Get your daily dose of grace on the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind every day when you download and stream these uplifting messages. Gain a revelation of the fullness of God's grace from Creflo Dollar's powerful sermons and transform into the powerful, victorious believer God made you to be. He will always take our brokenness, I believe, and He will bring new life and He will bring beauty from it. But thank God for the Word because it has the ability in and of itself to repair. With the Changing Your World podcast, you have encouraging and life-changing wisdom at your fingertips 24-7. Tune in whenever you need to be edified, no matter where you are. Subscribe to Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Have you ever wondered how the financial support from our viewers makes a difference in people's lives? We receive testimonies every day from people whose lives have been shattered by natural disasters, failed marriages, bankrupt businesses, and so on. They share how our outreach efforts and messages about God's grace have changed their lives in a tangible way. And for that, we give God all the glory. Today, I invite you to prayerfully consider financially supporting this ministry. We know you'll be empowered to see real change in others and prosper in your own life. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.